Hello, everybody. Let's see. I see there are 13 participants. Uh, very good. Very good. Good, good, good. I'm going to try to get my lecture going here. I, I thought I had it going. Um, just a moment. Okay, let's try again. And there's few of you, few enough of you in here that you can um, unmute yourself to ask a question as we go. But uh, for now, and I'm going to ask you in a minute if you can. First of all, can anybody hear me? Can you guys hear me? Okay. Yep, I can hear okay. you. All right. And the next I'll thing I'm going to do. Good, good, good. I'm going to try to get my presentation going here. Okay, can you see the big uh, slide where it says physical science, PSC 1121 fall 2021 yeah. getting started? Yes, sir. Yes. yes. And there's a big mountain? Yes. Yes. All right, now can you still see it? Yes. yes. All right, yes. let's go. Okay, let's go. Um, so, uh, uh, the, uh, I'm Thomas Brickner, the instructor, and what we're going to do for the first few minutes of tonight's session is I'm going to give you a kind of a little introduction to the class, what we're going to study, you know, how we get grades and stuff. I know everybody's interested in that. And then when we're done with that, we'll just have regular office hour type questions. And in office hours, normally, I don't have a, a presentation like today, but uh, you just come and you ask questions. And we'll do that for the last hmm, 15 minutes, maybe less, maybe more. All right. And uh, I love this photo. This is a, uh, a big mountain in uh, North Carolina uh, on the Appalachian Trail. And I always like to compare, you know, our study of science to climbing a mountain. And we get, you know, you're, you're working your way up, you're studying all different concepts and stuff, you're aiming for the summit. And um, we're gonna hit several summits uh, during the semester. Um, so uh, here's the spelling of my name. Uh, it's B-R-U-E-C-K-N-E-R. And it's one of those miss, Pronounce, infinitely mispronounceable German names and infinitely misspellable. So um, it's fine if you refer to me as Dr. Brickner or Dr. B, uh, which has been the pattern for many years now. I'm a theoretical astrophysicist and one of my research areas is black holes and another is the early universe, i.e. the Big Bang Theory. Um, I also study quantum information theory uh, which is the toughest of toughest of the lot. It's very difficult. Anyway, that's my research area. Um, I was born uh, on, a, as my friends like to remind me, uh, on another planet known as New Jersey, and there's a picture of it there. In other words, New Jersey. I'm a Jersey kid. Um, I went to undergraduate school at NYU in Greenwich Village. Here's a picture of basically the center of NYU, uh, Washington Square Park. And if you look there, you see that arch. Uh, and behind it, that's Fifth Avenue in New York City, going all the way up to Central Park. And so where you can, where you see the, um, the sky go down in that little slot there. Uh, that's Central Park way up there. And I've, you know, walked many times uh, all over Manhattan. And many times just, you just go straight up Fifth Avenue and get to Central Park and you, you know, you play football or whatever up there and uh, and then you come back down and you walk down and it's, it's a long walk, but it's a fun walk, especially if you're 
trying to cut classes. Now, I don't want to encourage you guys to cut classes. Don't get me wrong about that. But um, um, now, um, let me see if I can move this thing here. Hold on a second. Yeah, there we go. Um, so I'm, you know, just a little bit more biographical detail. I'm kind of crazy about my family, of course. I love them. Uh, and here's a TV family that is a little bit <laughs> pretty rambunctious most times, especially Steve Harvey. He's got that look on his face. Anyways, um, I have a wife and a son, and, and we love each other. Um, and I'm crazy about hiking up in the mountains. So now that's not me over there, but I've walked up this. Um, uh, this is a pass out in Grand Teton National Park. And uh, it's way up there at altitude. I don't know if I could do it. If I went up there tomorrow, you know, uh, I'm used to sea level. And when you're up there at about 10,000 feet at this point. And so you're definitely huffing and puffing. Anyways, I love to hike in the mountains. And that's why I have that picture of the uh, that mountain up in Virginia in the first page. All right. Um, now, uh, we're going to talk about what we will study for the semester in Physical Science 1121. And here's a, you know, here's a, a quote from uh, Professor Galileo that is in my book that you will use as a free textbook. And uh, uh, it's, he says, philosophy is written in this grand book, I mean the universe which stands continually open to our gaze. And Galileo is actually pretty important for the entire scientific enterprise. So we'll talk about him a little bit as we go through the semester. Um, here's another great topic, uh, hidden figures. We'll study them mm, about lecture four or five. And I'll talk about those um, uh, women in the movie and of course the book is, you know, 20 times better. It's much more interesting than, well, I mean, the movie's good, but, um, and one of the things that they were working on in that movie, and this is a real thing, although they kind of fake, they faked it up a little bit for Hollywood, but it was actually pretty, pretty good. Um, they were trying to figure out the trajectory of motion uh, for various spacecraft, including, you know, the John Glenn famous first orbit around the Earth for the Americans and the Apollo uh, 11 uh, lunar landing. Katherine Johnson was the, was the uh, central figure. She's in the middle here. Now, uh, another thing that we're gonna study is dynamical interactions, like for instance, this hockey player and the hockey puck that you see um, and how symmetry uh, of the forces and the, and the momentum, the energy uh, is expressed in the laws of motion. Uh, we're going to study the four dimensional nature of space time. Now, we're not going to get so deep into it, I mean, because you guys are probably don't, we're, we're not going to use a whole lot of math. I mean, I'm, of the most, the most math that I'll show you how to do all the math that we need to do. Uh, most of it is pretty simple and about as fancy as it gets is the Pythagorean theorem. But we'll talk about the concepts. And just so you guys know, I, I don't want anybody to be uh, misinformed. It is the concepts that are difficult. The mathematics is not, you know, anybody can, you know, even an engineering major, you can teach them a lot of calculus and stuff. And that's not the hard part. The hard part of science is, you know, thinking with the concepts, what do the concepts mean? And then after you've thought it over for a while, then you write down some equations maybe or a formula and, uh, and you work on it. And so we'll talk about that in the context of the symmetries uh, of dynamics. Uh, and it's, it's a, it's a, Something that most courses, intro courses do not teach, but I like to teach it because it's not that hard. Uh, 
it's unusual, but it's not that hard. Another thing that we'll talk about is uh, thermal interactions, you know, heating up water, cooling down water, um, and, um, you know, freezing it, you know, and, and, you know, heat transport, we'll talk about that as well. And a good example of that is this gigantic um, supercell. And I think this one's out in um, like Wyoming or, or Nebraska maybe. And they just got a super, super, uh, uh, and all, uh, you know, a great photo of it. And this, this is, it's spinning. You know, the heat is rising in the center and it's descending around the outer edges and it's spinning at the same time. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. It's extremely complex, hurricanes the same. And so, you know, this will be a little bit later in the semester, past the halfway point somewhere. And another thing that we're, actually, wait a minute, let me pause for questions. Um, go ahead and uh, type, and I, I see some people have some. Julia, you're from New Jersey too, nice. Uh, go ahead and type in the chat if you have a question so far. I'll just pause. Okay, Joe, Jake. That sounds good. Anybody else? Okay. Yeah, it's it's fine if you don't have a question. But you're, I'm sure you'll have questions in a week or two when we do another office hour session. Everybody will have questions. And. Uh, Lena, what's the most difficult concept? It, it's this, this one, thermal interactions. Because what we'll do, uh, one of the calculations that we'll make, you know, we'll be making velocity calculations and conservation of energy and, you know, all kinds of stuff. But the, probably the toughest one is figuring out the um, equilibrium temperature of two <clears throat> fluids that are initially at different amounts and different temperatures and different thermal properties. And that is diff that, that's something that we will do uh, when we talk about the thermal uh, interaction, uh, especially of water. Uh, and that's probably the hardest concept and the hardest calculation to tackle. Although, you know, the thing is, that's my opinion. You know, you may, Lena, at the end of the semester, you may think, no, Dr. B, that was so cinchy, all that thermal equilibrium stuff. The thing that really got me going was, and then you'll fill in the blank with something. So you never know. But, you know, as far as I'm concerned, uh, that's, that's probably the trickiest. All right, now about questions. One thing I want to emphasize to you, if you have a question about homework or like something from the lecture and you're taking lecture notes as you go, um, I, I don't want you to message me in web courses in through the inbox. I want you to post it in discussions and then everybody can read it and I can answer it and other classmates can answer it too. And that will be much more efficient um, and you'll help teach the rest of the class. We got a ton of students in here, all right, this semester. And so um, now if you have something that's private, you know, like you have a question about your grades or you have to miss class for some medical reason, that I want you to send me through the inbox messaging, okay? And I'm, I'm on inbox messaging, you know, like talking about my wife complains about it, you know, but I'm always working and stuff. Uh, so I'm on it pretty much, well, it's not 24 seven, but it's almost. And so I'm on that a lot and um, I'll see your message really quickly. And it's private and it, it's uh, FERPA compliant. So we can that, and do not send me email. Uh, not because I, I think you're, you're uh, bad people or something like that, 
But first of all, it's just, I have 500 something students this semester, so I can't, you know, you know, handle through email. Uh, but also email, I can't really talk to you about your personal, your grades and stuff. It's not, it's not considered uh, FERPA compliant. So, um, so just try to remember that. Anyways, you'll get used to it. Just use discussion. Just put it this way. Use discussions a lot, but don't put your personal messages in discussion. Just send that directly to me. Um, I haven't talked about the homework yet. I'll get to that. And notes for the exams. Yeah, I'll get to that, Samira, um, in a few minutes. All right, let me close the chat box here, and let's keep going. Here's another topic that we're going to study. Now, you may have seen on the internet this this uh, young lady on the left with her hands on that silver sphere. That's called a Van de Graaff generator. And if you type in uh, Van de Graaff, uh, Van de Graaff is uh, spelled. Uh, let me. Uh, where's my chat? Here it is. Okay, here's how you spell it. Uh, Van D G R A A F generator. And if you type that into YouTube, um, you'll see about nine zillion some really big Van de Graaff generators that generate lightning bolts. Now this one just generates little sparks, but it also makes your hair stand on it. Now that's a picture from the internet on the left. And it's a pretty good one. Uh, the one on the right is one of my students from a few semesters ago, and you can see, and he's, you can't see it in the photo, but his his left arm is touching uh, the Van de Graaff generator that we had. That was in uh, the Mathematical Sciences Building Room 350, and we just had everybody come up and and uh, you know try. Let's see if your hair is good because not every it, it, not everybody can do it. You know, their hair is not good enough, but this guy's hair was flying out into the universe. It's pretty good. And he's obviously, and some of the girls that we, I, I couldn't find any of the girls' pictures, but uh, some of the uh, female students, their hair was just fantastic. And just like the girl, the young lady on the left. Anyway, so this guy over here on the right, that was one of my students a few semesters ago, and we'll be studying that. Now you won't be able to do it because this is an online class. You won't be able to. Uh, try it yourself, but we have videos in YouTube showing this kind of demonstration. And if you type in Van de Graaff, as I said, in YouTube, you'll come up with about five zillion way better examples than anything I've got. Um, so there's just some spectacular stuff. And that's all about static electricity and the, the forces. You know, this uh, these two individuals, their hair standing on end like that. It's trying to escape the gravitational pull of the Earth uh, because um, of the force of electrostatic repulsion. Okay, and opposites attract, likes repel. Uh, and we're going to be studying that, and that'll bring us to about the end of the semester. Uh, and we'll be able to talk about, you know, molecules and atoms, and in fact, the structure of DNA. And this is a a photo of a very jostle and not Jocelyn Bell, but um, uh, uh, Rosalind Franklin, and she was the one that made the photo, the photograph on the left, image fifty-one, uh, by which they figured out once they saw that, oh yeah, this has got to be a, a double spiral, a double helix, and uh, she never got credit for it. The guys that got the Nobel Prize for that. Um, uh, kind of stole her data. Um, anyways, they figured, you know, they published all the papers. And by the time they got the Nobel Prize for it, she had already died of breast cancer. So it's a very sad story. But I like to feature her. And she'll be a topic uh, toward the end of the semester, you know, and we'll talk about the structure of molecules and bind, bond, molecular bonding and stuff like that, which was the key in this whole DNA mystery. So that'll be about where we finish the semester, maybe a little bit further than that. All right, now let me pause for questions. Um, and I see, let me move this. Uh, 
Laura Nesbitt, Lauren Nesbitt, how much time do you recommend working on this class every day? Uh, well, it's just up to you, you know. Um, uh, you know, it, it, you know, some people, they just crash study at the last day before the midterm. And they don't do anything for three weeks. And I can tell when you're not in this, in this, in web courses in our area, you know, for a week or whatever. But it's up to you. Uh, and Lauren, there is a PACE um, sheet now on our homepage. Um, and it's called uh, Physical Science HQ, the headquarters page. And I spent a, a few hours getting that all tricked out today. Now it's not finished, but everything in there up to the first midterm is righteous. So, um, and that gives you a good uh, pace. And in fact, let me see. Uh, we'll go back to that in a minute. Uh, Christy, uh, I'm going to try to have office hours in Zoom every week. All right. And I, I probably won't have a presentation like this. This is like a mini lecture. Um, but uh, we'll have talks and we'll, we'll work on problems and stuff and I'll you know, show, show you how to do calculations and stuff. We'll talk about this and that. They're pretty good usually. And you just come if you can. And if you can't, I'll usually record them like this one's being recorded. Uh, I'll record them. And then if you can't make it, or if you go only make the first 30 minutes and then you have to bail out, you can go back and listen to the recording. It's a video recording. So it works out pretty good. All right. Uh, Hunter, I haven't, you mean office hours, Hunter? Uh, I don't know. And by the way, you guys can turn on your microphones if you want to speak. I mean, I, I, it's, we don't have that many. Uh, oh, well, we got 37 now. That's pretty good. Uh, out of 200, that's like, what is that, on the eighth? Anyways, um, I haven't figured out what time. So, Hunter, what do you think is a good time for you? I mean, you know, you know, you can tell me what you think is a good time and then. Uh, I mean, for me, anything after like four o'clock is good. I don't know about anybody else though. Seriously? Yeah. Yeah, I, tr I try to have them in the evening. So it's usually about seven when I do, but you know, I'm, you know, we can have them anytime we want. So, and I usually, usually the office hour session prior to the midterms, are pretty well attended. I'll just put it that way. Everybody's trying to get studied up and everything. Thank All right, let's, let me close the chat for now and let's keep going. Now, uh, the next thing, you know, what are we going to be doing? You know, what are we going to we going to do? Homework, exams. You know, you know we got a lot of stuff um, that's going to be going on. So let's take a look at it. Okay, you're going to be using YouTube lectures for instructions. All right, now that's on the uh, HQ page right now, and you, some of you may have already done it. There's several lectures, they're linked in there, and all you have to do is click the link and it'll pop out, a, I believe, a separate window um, of each of the YouTube lectures. Now, these were record, let's see, these were recorded in spring of 2019, which is the last time I did lectures before the emerge the COVID emergency. So they're, you know, they're a couple years old. Uh, and that semester I had it, but you know, that was the last semester without disruption. And uh, I had a regular lecture section of two, 300 students. And then I had another couple hundred students in the online. So we basically, you know, there was a couple 300 students in the online section that didn't go to class, but they got the same content. So um, that's what you're going to be doing for a primary instruction. And you'll have readings from the free textbook. The free textbook is linked to the home page. I'm pretty sure it's linked to the home page. OK, it's a book that I wrote. And it's free. I used to, I, 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 I wrote it so that I could uh, sell it to students for 10 or 20 bucks. But the, the uh, publisher just was charging an arm and a leg so that you could have it for six months or something like that. It was really, I was very unhappy about that. So I just, so now I just give it away. 
All right. So um, now what you do with that is you, you do the lectures, you take notes, and then you follow up with readings. Okay, that's the direction that you should go. So you should think of the lectures as introducing topics and elaborating on them. And then you go and you know use the search function in the textbook and look up different topics and just read around and add to your lecture notes. Okay, and that can be really powerful. The other thing, you know, so you, so you wanna take notes as you view the YouTube lectures and as you read around in the textbook. And uh, those notes, somebody was asking me about study guides for exams. Uh, your lecture notes are your study guides. I don't, I don't make study guides for students. You make study guides. And that's how I want you to think of your lecture notes, okay? And you know, if you make friends with somebody in the class, um, you know, through discussions or something else, um, it's good to compare lecture notes and, you know, study to get, I, I cannot, un, I can't overestimate the importance of studying together with a friend, all right, with another human being, even if they're from another planet. Uh, because it helps you, you know, the saying iron sharpens iron um, is meant to reflect the fact that, you know, talking with another human being forces you to think. And that is what we want you to do, right? And so you take the lecture notes, you improve them on your own, you improve them with uh, a study partner. Homework assignments also follow up on topics from the YouTube lectures, all right? And I think we have a few of our homework assignments already set up. Uh, now, um, another thing that we're gonna be doing is uh, midterms. And what we do, midterm exams, uh, what we do is we keep the best two out of three and we drop the lowest. So if you've done all three, you have the luxury of, you know, dropping your lowest score and we keep the best two. And all, almost all the time that improves people's grade significantly, you know, because, you know, some, you know, some students, you know, they might, take a face plant on exam two or exam one, and then, but then that's the one that gets dropped. And so the grade goes up as a result. Okay, now that we won't do that until after the third midterm. Uh, so up until the third midterm, you're just, you're just gonna have two midterms on the books. Okay, which is all right. But then after the third midterm, we'll do this maneuver where we drop the lowest score. They'll still be in web courses. You'll see the grade, but it won't be in the grade calculation that I do. All right, um, we have a final exam and what I'm doing this semester is a little different. Um, it's gonna be a mini final. It's only gonna be 30 points instead of, the midterms are 50 and the homework is gonna bundle up and be converted to 50 points. Uh, but I make the mini final, it, I, I want it to be a little bit lower stress than finals have been in the past and uh, you know, for various reasons. Uh, so it's only 30 instead of 50 points. So that's like typically 30 multiple choice questions. Um, and toward the end of the semester, we might have a few bonus point opportunities, usually, you know, two or three. And they're never that big, you know, it's just like three or four points maybe, but it'll, it'll definitely help. You know, so if you have three midterms and you have two stinky grades, and you got to keep one, you drop one of the stinky grades and you keep one of the other stinky grades, uh, the bonus points will help, you know, uh, help make that a little bit nicer. Wow, we got 31 questions here. Let me, um, all right. And let me just remind you to uh, use the physical science HQ page to set your pace. Now, let me check chat here. I see we got a ton of students blazing it up in here. Uh, man, it's, it's, we're getting a lot of thunder. I hope our uh, internet doesn't get blazed up here. Uh, a tense or requirement. There's nothing required, Dante, you know. You don't, 
you know, everything at UCF is voluntary, you know, but uh, I have stuff set up and uh, so, but, you know, so I expect you to be here um, for exams. I expect you to do the homework on time. Um, and uh, you know, that's pretty much it. You, you know, office hours are voluntary. You know, you don't, you can, if you can come, you know, if you can make it, you make it. If you can't, you can't. And that's the same during a, in, in a regular lecture class. You know, I, you know, I have office hours over in room 158 in the physical sciences building uh, for a lecture. You know, I haven't been on campus for a class uh, since spring break of 2020. It's incredible. Anyways, when I'm back, you know, I'm not up on campus this semester. Next semester, I will be. And when I am, I'll have office hours up there. Okay, but you know, attendance, there's nothing to attend, uh, Dante. You know, just do your homework and get your, do your readings and get your exams done and you're, you're good. Uh, homework zero, Ella, is uh, the attendance quiz. Yeah, that's the financial aid thing. Um, yeah, Madison, yeah, it, it you know, Make, you know, just try to keep them small. It's, uh, you know, I see everybody's, yeah, me too. Yeah, group me. Uh, can anyone do a group me? I have to warn you about group me. Um, and I want you to be very careful and listen very carefully. In a few past semesters, we have caught students cheating on exams using group me. And uh, we reported them to the um, academic, uh, what do they call it? The academic, uh, not uh, misbehavior, but the academic uh, infraction committee. And a few of them got Zs on their transcript. It was a real mess. It took a long time to get it all sorted out. So you wanna be really careful about that. I, so I recommend don't use GroupMe. But it's a free country, so you do what you want. Another thing I want to uh, point out to you is we're going to be using honor lock proctoring system. And uh, that is pretty, it is a pretty tough system, right? So you won't be able to use group me anyways during the exam. Uh, but I, I recommend don't use it at all. Uh, all right, let's keep going. Uh, Samira, how many questions on midterms? Well, the midterms are 50 points. So if they're all multiple choice, then that would be 50 questions. You know, matching, true, false, multiple choice. Uh, if I put a, uh, and usually I put a couple calculations on each exam though. And so, so, and the calculations are maybe two or three points each. So that means, you know, so that means I don't have to have 50 points, or I have to have 50 questions to get 50 points. So you might have, you know, like 45 questions, but still a total of 50 points. So, and it just depends on how I want to write the exam. So I never know how to predict it. I mean, I can't predict it. I just, you know, write what I think is good. Um, uh, boy, everybody's talking about group me. That's not a good sign. Uh, Samira, I just answered you. Uh, oh boy. Exams are, yes, Anastasia, exams are online. So everything is online. Matter of fact, I'm not even supposed to, you know, I live here in Orlando and uh, I, I, I do go up to campus, you know, for things, but I'm not supposed to meet with you guys. It's kind of a, you know, I don't like the way they have it. You know, they, you know, they tell us we're not supposed to, you know, have regular office hours face to face. And it's just, there's a lot of things that you guys don't get that the, uh, in the lecture hall students get. I don't like this. Uh, Samira, no, you may not use notes on your exams. You only have to use your brain. 
Shomara enamorado. Uh, no, you're not allowed to use notes on the exam. So, but if you do the um, uh, the normal amount of studying, Shomara, uh, you know, but no, but no notes, you should do, you know, decently. I mean, you might not get an A, but you're not going to flunk. That's what I like. I try to make my exams uh, tough to flunk for the normal amount of studying. Uh, but yet, if you do a lot of studying, you're, you're still going to be challenged so tough to ace. Uh, yes, you can use your notes. Dante, yes, use your notes. Use everything for homework. And you're going to, for each homework, you're going to have multiple attempts available. So you'll have four attempts. And so you can use it as a study tool, you know, to take that and go back and look at your notes, do some reading, re listen to the video. Uh, and then go back and do another attempt. Uh, yeah, Madison, don't worry about it. I know it's it's. Um, Samira, you're asking me what's going to be on the exams. I'm not going to. Nice try. I'm not going to. I'm not going to be tricked into telling you what's on exams. But doing the homework is definitely going to help you with exams. I mean, that's why we have homework. Where we have lectures, and in the end of that process of, of lecturing is an exam to see if you've picked up the important stuff that I mentioned in lecture. And along between the exam and lecture, there's homework and reading, and that's how you want to use those. Uh, what work do I review for the homework? At Cameron, everything from lectures. Just like I said, and you know, here in this, okay, I'm gonna close this now. Um, let's see if I can move this out of the way here. Um, you know, uh, let's see. Oh, I can't. I can't go backwards. Yes, I can. Okay. You see this picture of a cat, a kitty cat, afraid of some dinosaurs. Here's your key. Okay. Take notes as you view the YouTube lecture and then add to them as you read around the textbook and maybe even after homework. And those notes are your, gonna be your study guide. So everybody's gonna have a different study guide depending on how they make their lecture notes, right? But I don't do study guides for students, all right? So let's keep going through here, all right? Now here's the grade situation, all right? And I've kind of alluded to this already and we can, we can have some more questions after I, I do this page. Um, the, the things that go into your semester grade on the, in the left-hand table are homework, the three midterm, well, best two out of three midterms, and then the mini final. Now, and so that's a total of 180 points, all right? And you can see the fractions that each one does. And the thing that's new in this uh, as, compared to previous physical science classes, is that the mini final is a little, the final exam is a little smaller. And that means if you blow it, it's not such a big disaster. So if you concentrate on your midterms and crush the homework and get all 50 points and crush one or two midterms, and then maybe, you know, you, you might not do so good on the final, but it's only a 16.7%. It's still pretty big. I mean, 16.7% of your grade, it's still pretty big, but the other things are bigger. And, uh, and here's something that you'll hear in the YouTube lectures, eye clickers. Okay, now we're not using eye clickers, so you ignore all that stuff. Um, but that's all in, in a normal lecture hall, we would have eye clicker pointage in this table, but we don't. So, so here's another way, you know, homework is going to be set up so that you're, most of you are going to get like 50 out of 50, 49 out of 50, something like that. And that's like getting a mid to 49 out of 50 on a midterm. All right. Because you have three midterms and they're each 50 and you might not, you might not even break 40 points. But if you get 49 out of 50 on homework, which almost everybody can get if they actually do the homework, 
uh, you're going to be sitting in the, in the catbird seat, as they say in, in Major League Baseball. All right, so those are the tasks that you do. Now, they'll add up to some number between 0 and 180. Oh, by the way, that doesn't account any bonus points. Okay, now those are, I don't put those in, in this table because not everybody is required to do bonus point activity. Anyway, at the end of the semester, if you have 162 points or more, you have an A for the semester, okay? And that will include all the regular stuff in the table and then uh, any bonus points you may earn along the way. So if you end up with the regular tasks, 158, and then you get four bonus points from the bonus point activities, that would be 162 and you'd have an A for the semester. And so those bonus points can be really helpful. 135 or more, uh, would be a B, 108 or more would be a C, 90 or more, that's 50% of the points, um, is a D. And if you don't have um, half the points, um, that's an F. Now, I don't give out a lot of Fs and I don't give out a lot of Ds, right? Most of the time, the people that get Fs are people that don't come to class or don't participate in the web courses area, which I can monitor. Right, and that's what I do. I mean, every time I, a student's got an F, I go and look at their activity log sheet, their, their activity log page. And I can see they're taking, you know, weeks off, two weeks off between exams. That's no way to go. You want to get in there every day and do a little bit and study. And if you follow the pace sheet uh, on the HQ page, you should be okay. And you can work faster than that if you want. Uh, but that's like the minimum to get everything done uh, on the same pace as a Tuesday, Thursday lecture class. All right. Now, uh, let me look at chat. A couple more questions. Uh, by the way, what time is it here? Oh, boy, we're almost done. Uh, we have a couple questions here. Madison, no, the book is free. I just told you that a few minutes ago. All right. Um, the, the book that I provided is the textbook for this class, All right? So lectures, textbook, and homework. Um, Cameron, yeah, you do. You need some kind of a cheap webcam, okay? And apparently you can't use your phone for honor lock. Uh, so, and I'll be giving you guys some instruction. In fact, I'll be giving you a a practice uh, test for honor lock. So you can, you know, test out your new webcam and, uh, you know, uh, you know, get used to the, the access, get, getting logged into honor lock and then the exam can be a pain in the neck. I mean, if you, they scan the back, they, they scan your room. And if they see a face in the background, they're gonna assume you're cheating. You're not supposed to have anybody in the room. So la many times over the past few semesters, I have to tell students now, if you have a picture of, you know, your mom on the wall, President Obama, you know, Johnny Apps, anybody, they're going <laughs> to flag you for, a fa for being uh, somebody in the room. So you got to be careful with it. So it's, it's kind of tricky to get on, but you'll get used to it. It's not a big disaster. Okay. Uh, Robert, it's honor lock that we're going to be using. Uh, so anyways, well, it's time. It's time for us to uh, dip out of here. Um, it's almost 745. So let me just say, you know, um, Welcome aboard, and I'll, I'll see you in office hours next week. And maybe we'll have another office hours later this week. All right, so be alert to announcements. Be alert to discussions. And, uh, and that'll be good. So um, I'll just say good night, and I'll wish everybody a, uh, a pleasant evening. Thank you. Um, you're welcome. Awesome. Thank, thank you. you. Have a good one. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, you're, you're welcome, Shamara, for the free book. I'm very happy to give it to you guys for free.
All right, Lena, very good. And Andrew, Julia, good. Fernando, all right. Good, I'll see you guys later. God bless you. How do I get out of here? I can't remember how to do all these things. Uh, let me see this. Stop sharing. Megan Brady, thank you. Wait, real quick, how do we get to the um, free textbook? Uh, I believe it's linked to the, the homepage. Let me just that's check where, that. That's where it was originally. I can't see it now. It was, it was like a big um, Yeah, it was originally. All right, I'll put it up uh, on there right now. Let's see. It's, 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 you know, it's in modules. The modules page is where, oops, oopsie doopsie. Hold on. Uh, let's see. Edit. Okay. I'm editing the um, HQ page. And so, you know, I like to have several different. Um, you know, uh, access points like for the textbook. So this will be one more. Because, you know, the modules uh, uh, button in the, in the left side will work. Okay, now the readings will work. Okay, so that's good. All righty, I'll see you later.